Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're um, you're all well and uh, ready for our um, world first Royal Salute virtual tasting this afternoon. Um, obviously, we are in my uh, special Royal Salute bar, um, which uh, only carries the very finest of stock, obviously. So what, can, can everybody hear me okay? Good. Um, right, so I, I want to talk about a few things today. I would like to talk a bit about, obviously, Royal Salute. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I came to be the master blender for Royal Salute and a little bit about the history of Royal Salute and, obviously, what we're all here for, the new Regent's Banquet festive gift pack from Royal Salute. So, I'll probably start with a bit of a history about myself. I started in the business back in 1983 in a small whisky company on the east coast of Scotland where I started working in the sample room as a sample room assistant and I was given the opportunity to nose lots of different samples and showed an aptitude for being able to memorise and describe flavours and that's really important when training to be a blender. The other, the other great thing about working for a real small whisky company was I was able to do lots of different jobs throughout the year. I was working in the bottling area, the case goods area, the blending area, while always spending part of my day in the sample room, building up my sensory skills, my memory, and able to blend whiskies together. This process went on for about eight or nine years, and then I was given the opportunity to come down and work in Glasgow for a far, far bigger company. But this grounding at the small company, doing lots of different jobs as well as doing blending, set me in great stead for the future for looking after the Royal Salute family of whiskies. I've now been in the whisky business for 34 years, and part of my responsibilities are obviously looking after the quality and the continuity of all the Royal Salute whiskies, but also I'm responsible for all the casks, the purchasing of the casks. If you take anything away from today, casks are massively important when making whisky and blending whisky. Just hold on a second, I'm just going to accept another call. Right? Um, yeah, casks are important and part of my remit as well is to look after our technical centres, our laboratories where we can do a bit of analysis and make sure our products are consistently analytically and there are no pickups from any materials. For, my, for me, the blending job starts, and lots of people think that a blender is making whiskey, any sample room, designing new whiskies, when, when that is not really the case. The blender's job starts right at the minute the whisky has been distilled. Every week I see all the samples, new whisky, from before it's gone into casks from all our distilleries and I check that whisky, check the flavour, make sure that it's consistent, make sure that the flavours are exactly the profile that I'm looking for. When I test that whisky in Speyside, all these results go into our inventory system and we have a record for the future of how that whisky is in a flavour profile that we're looking for. This is, this is hugely important because the new distillate whisky that I checked this week, I will not see that matured as Royal Salute. I will be retired. And it's, it's part of that link of marking the whisky, making sure that you have the correct records. I'm working with some of the whisky from the previous Master Blender. I'm working with whiskies that have been distilled under my tenure. And also, I'm laying down whiskies for the next Master Blender that will be lucky enough to look after this prestigious whisky. When making Royal Salute, every single cask is tested prior to empty. I will set a formula that will run for the whole year and we will make sure that every single cask is tested to guarantee the quality. If we were to put together a batch of Royal Salute and there was something wrong with it without testing the casks, it's not like we can make more tomorrow. Every single cask of whiskey in the Royal Salute blend has been matured for longer than 21 years, which is an amazement, amazing commitment 
to quality, to make sure that we have the right whisky and lay it down for that huge length of period of time. Also when making Royal Salute, each batch we make, we keep a little bit back, what we call the continuity batch, and we keep that and add it into the next batch we make. And it's an extra level of continuity and commitment to quality for Royal Salute. We're making sure that a little bit of the batch is kept behind and added in every single time. That little batch that goes from batch to batch each time to guarantee the continuity can never be used. So it is an expensive thing to do, but one that we are prepared to do to keep the quality and keep the continuity of Royal Salute. Now I mentioned earlier that Royal Salute has been matured in cask. Each of the individual components have been matured for more than 21 years. And as you will probably know, every year we're losing about 2% in evaporation, it's often referred to as the angel share. So every single cask of Royal Salute that makes Royal Salute will have lost over 40% of the whiskey from the cask. Now, you may say that we should, we should be doing experiments to try and keep that loss down, but any experiments that have been done of wrapping casks or trying to stop that evaporation have affected the sweetness and the development of flavor and have inhibited the flavour that we're looking for. So that interaction with the whisky and the cask and that evaporation of the whisky passing through the pores of the wood and drawing flavours from the cask is massively important when building up the Royal Salute flavour for the brand. Now, Royal Salute was first developed in 1953 to commemorate the coronation of Queen Elizabeth and was designed, this wonderful whisky was, was designed and filled into these wonderful flagons in three distinct colours. There's the sapphire, the ruby and the emerald flagons that each represent the colours of the stones in the royal crown. Every one of those decanters looks amazing and has to be befitting was always in the history of the brand it was always perceived that there must be a fabulous packaging to stand up to the wonderful flavours of the Royal Salute whiskies. Now before I, before I move on I, I believe that you've all been given a, a question mark if you want to ask a question and I have left some time at the end for questions but I'm more than happy to take any questions from anyone as we go here as they come to you because sometimes it's difficult to remember at the end and it, it, it's good it's good to get a bit of interaction from yourselves as well everybody hear me okay yeah yes okay. can i ask one yeah of course um, is the allocation the uh available three different flagons exactly the same or is one the lead and the other two support i'm sorry i didn't didn't quite catch that greg if you just say again you were breaking up there Do you, want, do you want to try to say that again, Greg? Sorry? Would, you could say that again, that'd be great, you were breaking up. Cool. Um, is, uh, are they all equally distributed, or is one the lead and the other support? No, it's all pretty much equally distributed. You know, there's not, there isn't one more than the other. That's a good question, no. Each, each, each box will have a mixture of the colours in each one, and there's no one more than the other. Do you get that, yeah? Anyway, so moving, moving on, you have all been sent this fabulous Regent's Banquet festive gift pack and I thought it would be, well obviously you've been given instructions of we're going to all open it together and we're going to taste it today and I said at the start this is an absolute world first for Royal Salute, we've never done anything like this before so I'm hoping that it's going to work and you've all been sent two glasses and two glasses specifically because I want to set up the whiskey in two different ways and compare them as we would test the whiskey professionally in the sample room. So we're going to have two tastings today. You're going to have, you're going to set it up as you would test it in the sample room and then we're going to taste it as you would normally taste it when you're enjoying it at home, which uh, will give you a good comparison. So you all have, you all have the Regent's pack set. With the, 
the fabulous fretwork on the front. This is this this whole pack is inspired by the Regent's Banquet that was held in 1817 at Brighton Pavilion, where there were 120 exotic dishes of all sorts of different fabulous colours given to the attendees of this fabulous banquet. And the front here has some wonderful fretwork that really echoes Brighton Pavilion. The colours were specially designed by a wallpaper designer called Angela Groundwater, who has a fabulous reputation. And she's picked up some of the real, wonderful, luxurious colours that would have been prevalent at that dinner. So if you would like to open up your pack, and take your, I believe you've got to take your miniature and open up your miniature. I've got a bottle here that I'm going to pour from. And I'd like you to pour a measure into both of your glasses. If everybody just wants to hold up their glass when they're ready, I'll know that we're ready to move on to the next bit. Everybody okay? Ready. Good. Right, what I would like you to do is take the first glass and just give it a gentle sniff. Now, we specifically gave you nosing glasses because this is how we would do it professionally in the sample room. And don't be frightened to put your nose right into the glass. Going round the edge won't give you the full flavour of the Royal Salute. Put your nose right into the glass and you'll get the flavour. Now, it's really interesting because you nose that whisky and it's, you can see right away that it's really sweet, it's really fruity, but it's intense, it's really concentrated in flavour. There is a real sweetness but the flavour is very, very concentrated. It's difficult to to, to, to split it down and get the, the, the little nuances that are there. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the second glass and I want you to add about half as much water again. Now that's not exactly as we would test it in the sample room but it's a, it's a, it's a good strength for nosing and drinking the whisky. And if you take that second, take that second glass and nose the whiskey, you'll see right away that it is completely different. Take the first glass in your left hand and the second in your right and nose the two separately. And you'll see, if someone were to give you those samples blind, you would almost think they were two different whiskies. It is, it, it is amazing how the addition of water opens up the flavour, gives you some of the more finer nuances. On that second sample now, I'm getting sweet pear, I'm getting pears and syrup, I'm getting peach, I'm getting cinnamon, and I'm getting a little bit of that vanilla, and milk, milk chocolate. I'm getting a real sort of soft, sweet milk chocolate. But if you go back and you nose the first sample again, you'll see really sweet, really intense, but you're not able to differentiate as clearly as you can with the first against the second sample. So what we should do now is we should try the Royal Salute and taste the Royal Salute blend. You can see that it is really sweet. It coats the mouth. For me, it's that real sweet, juicy orange flavours. Really nice. And a little bit of that creamy caramel toffee coming through. But as that flavour subsides, I'm getting a bit of ginger and a little bit of cinnamon in there as well. It's got that lovely, soft, sweet spiciness in the background. Really, really nice. Really, really sweet. The 21 years in casks is hugely important. But what is even more important is the quality of casks that you have used. You can't use a cask forever. It is, a, it is not just a vessel to hold whiskey. It is a vessel 
that has a limited lifespan and how you manage your casks in a really old blend like Royal Salute is massively important. That you want the balance between flavour of the distillate and cask influence to just be perfect. You don't want the cask to overpower the whisky and it becomes too oaky and too strong. When you nose the Royal Salute you can get that toffee, there's a little bit of nuttiness in there as well, which are coming from, and vanilla coming from the cask influence. But you're still getting lots of that soft fruit, pear flavours, peach, even a little bit of orange on the taste coming through. It is really succulent, really sweet, really fruity. So Royal Salute, Three different expressions in the different flagons, but the whisky is exactly the same. It doesn't matter where Royal Salute is sold throughout the world, it is exactly the same blend in the flagons. And this new Regent's Banquet special edition pack will be available all over the world for around $130. In the UK, it'll probably be, it's going to be sold exclusively through Harvey Nichols at £150. And I'm sincerely hoping that I've got one under the tree at Christmas. I actually saw one in a travel retail coming through Dubai yesterday. Did you really? Yeah, 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 <laughs> super. Yeah, so it's obviously out there already, which is excellent. Yes, it's been really well received. We were very lucky to get Angela to come and work with us to be able to design the packaging, make sure that everything was befitting of Royal Salute. And that's, that's, that's the big thing with Royal Salute, is that we want, it, it, it's, the, it's the, the blended range of whiskey that starts at 21 years old. You know, it, it starts where many, many other blended families of whiskies don't even reach 21, but we only, we have nothing less than 21. It's 21 or older for all the different expressions, with Royal Salute 21 year old being the absolute classic expression. You should go back again and you should nose the, the neat sample. That's not something we would normally do in the sample room, but it's interesting because it's, even though it's concentrated, it really has some of the fruit flavours. And if you taste the second sample again, what always amazes me about Royal Salute, and one thing that I'm really fastidious about making sure that it stays, is that it has a really long finish. When you drink the Royal Salute, you get that really sweet, fruity flavour, then the flavour starts to dissipate over time. You get a little bit of smoke. There's a sensation of smoke just at the end of the taste. But what I'm wanting it to have is a really long finish. You're, you tend to find you have a glass of Royal Salute, you drink, you drink a sip from it, and you're not rushing back to the glass. You're taking your time, you're waiting, you're not, you're not having to reach back because the flavours are still on the, ballot, the palate. It is really big and voluptuous in flavour. It has a real richness to it, Royal Salute. It just has wonderful sweet fruit flavours. So I'm going to pass over to you guys now, and if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer questions about Royal Salute or about how we maintain the blend. But obviously, as well, I'm happy to discuss the new special Regent Banquet Festive Gift Pack. I start. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you fine. So I've noticed that most of the um, whiskies they are in a glass bottle. Yes. And you want to mm -hmm. Can you tell a little bit more about the influence? Why did you go for porcelain over a glass? I think historically, Royal Salute has always, since 1953, has always been in the porcelain flagon. And I, I, it won't affect, there's absolutely no difference between glass or porcelain on the flag. And the only difference with glass is you'll get to see the colour of the whisky. You'll get to see the, the richness through the, through, the, through the glass. But it's just purely that the, the, the decanter makes a wonderful gift for somebody. To give somebody something like that with a 21-year-old whisky in it is just unbelievable. It's not even just in a bottle. It's, it's the whole package when you're giving it, especially the Regent Banquets pack, in that wonderful carton with a laser cut fretwork front. It really, really is a fabulous thing to be given. Yeah, I, I have to comp 
compliment the box because I was like, it's beautiful. <laughs> I opened it and I was like, oh my gosh, I love the box. I don't even really see what's inside yet, but I love the box. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, I, I, as I said earlier, I'm sincerely hoping that I'm in line to get one later on because I don't have one yet. So you guys are all one step in front of me. <laughs> I think we've probably lost a couple of people here. They've dropped. They've dropped out. Don't think the signal, the signal is 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 too good, but. Um, we should probably take the opportunity to just uh, enjoy our 21 year old. I think it's really, it, it, it's really interesting that we, we, are, we are still blending Royal Salute in exactly the same way that it would have been done in 1953. There is no intervention by equipment or analysis that is different we're individually i'm individually nosing all the casks building up the blend in miniature in the sample room with test tubes and measuring cylinders to make sure that it's the right quality and then running to a full size batch and putting that into the holding vats ready for bottling it is a it, it, it is a big responsibility to look after such a prestigious brand but one that I absolutely relish and making sure that all the stock is in good order for when my time at Royal Salute, which is a, a few years yet, but when my time is over, I'll have all the right stocks laid down for the next blender to make sure that we keep that lineage and that quality together. Because to make a good whiskey is, is difficult, but to make a good whiskey consistently year after year, and that's what it's about, it's about quality, and continuity, batch after batch, making sure that our consumers who love Royal Salute know that the next time they buy it, they're going to get exactly the same flavour again. That real rich, sweet, fruity, intense flavours with a wonderful long finish. So to keep that flavour, what is the best way to store whiskey once you've opened it? The good thing about whiskey, it's not like wine because it has a slightly higher strength, so it's far, far more stable. So if I was if I was recommending how to keep whiskey, if I had a bottle of Royal Salute and I had opened that bottle of Royal Salute and had a drink out of that bottle of Royal Salute and thought I'm going to have another drink another day or maybe another month, that whiskey can keep for many years, providing... The only thing I would say is if you keep it in a very hot place, you might get a slight flattening of flavour. Any whiskey that is stored in a very warm or hot place, you might get a slight flattening of flavour over time. But the great thing about Scotch whisky is you can keep it for years and years and go back and try it again and again, and you won't have any deterioration in flavour whatsoever. Any more questions? You know how you um, said that the casks are most important? What determines a good cask, and by where do you find? Ah, good, 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 good. Yeah, good question. Um, uh, next month, next month, I'll be going out on my annual trip to Spain to um, purchase the next year's quantity of sherry casks, um, and we have long established contracts with our American oak barrel suppliers to uh, supply us with new casks coming in every year. And I think it's really important to have that flow of new casks coming in that cascade down your inventory. You know, you fill them a first time, you fill them a second, you fill them a third, and you want, you want to have them dropping out the bottom and new casks coming in to give you that, you know, rich vanilla, nutty flavors. But if I can go back to sherry casks, sherry casks for me are really important because I even specify the type of sherry, the actual mix blend of sherry that goes in the cask that is conditioned for 18 months to two years. Then the casks are emptied and we get the cask. So we're not just buying empty sherry casks, we're buying brand new casks, conditioning them with sherry and then taking the empty casks to use for our blends. So I think having that robust process, we also a really interesting thing for you to, to, to take away from today is that 
if a cask has been filled three times, it doesn't necessarily mean that every third fill cask is the same quality. Because a cask could be filled three times for a product that is 12 years old and it's 36 years old, or it could be filled three times for Royal Salute and it's 63 years old. So it's the number of times it's been filled and the length of time each time that will give you the maturation potential when making a very good old whisky. The lifespan of the cask, I would probably say, is about about between thirty and forty years. Right. But we have a we have a special, or I have a special system that we we fill with malt the first time, the second time, then we'll fill with grain because grain is more delicate, light, faster maturing. So you find it doesn't need as much influence from the cask. So you, we have a special formula, and each cask is tagged so that I can see how many times it's been filled and the length of time it's been filled for, so that we have the, 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 the total history of the cask, so we can manage the quality. So it's about the, the whisky that's been made at the distillery is hugely important, but over and above that as well, managing your cask inventory is that extra help in quality and continuity. Yes. Um, I missed the first few minutes because of some technical issues. You, you might have covered this, but um, the different whiskies that go into the uh, Royal Salutes, yes. are they mainly from the Shivas distilleries or uh, if, if they're not, uh, have you had any difficulties over time, especially the last few years on, on getting the quantities you need? So you're, you're looking at replacing some of those with other single malts or, or other grains to go into the mix? Yeah, there's quite a few points to make here. Yes, we, we, we are using whiskies from our own distilleries and yes, we, we supplement that with some whiskies that we trade. We trade with our other, our other competitors um, and these are long established agreements that have run for, for decades and decades. So. They are, they are ingredients that I'm well aware of and I know that I can, I can get every year um, as a trade for our own whiskies. Um, it's important that we have those whiskies, but also it's about building up a flavour package. So every year when I review the recipe for Royal Salute, there may be, I may be looking at the inventory and see that there are some little gaps coming through and I might want to make a little change and do some work. And, Sometimes you'll need two or three whiskies to replace one or to phase one in or phase one out. And I think it's about, that's where the, the blender's art really comes into it. It's making sure you can build up the flavour profile using the whiskies. But we're in a very, a very good position here at Royal Salute that we have a good spread of distilleries that we can choose from. We have good quality casks. Everything has been matured to perfection. Yes, we're trading whiskies as well. We're bringing some other whiskies in to give us that broad depth and complexity that we're looking for in the blend we'll be bringing in some others to mix with our own and that brings up that that's what gives us that end round sweet really fruity rich intense flavor Another question then. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, the uh, the amount of, of grain in in the in the mix here is that more or less constant? Uh, and yes, if so, yes, it is. Can you say that's, about that's, what that's a really good question because Royal Salute is a very rich, intense, fruity, super aged whisky, and the, to get that level of concentration of fruit, there is more malt whisky in Royal Salute blend than there would be in many other whiskies of the same sort of caliber. Does that make sense to you, yeah? Yeah, that makes sense. Good. Um, can you tell us anything about at what level? Is it 50-50 or...? <laughs> 
dear. I'd have to send or, somebody. Or, or, if, if I told you, I'd have to send somebody around to shoot you after it. <laughs> No, that is that is something does it, that is. Does it vary? Does it vary over time? I would no, it doesn't vary. I, I, I think the the best thing I could say is, on occasion, it can be fine tuned. If I have, if I have quite a lot of first fill American oak barrels that are in malt whiskey for the blend, I might just increase the grain slightly to temper the oak flavour. I don't want. That's the, I said earlier, the difficult thing about making a really old whiskey like Royal Salute, 21 year old, is balancing the oak influence with the flavour of the distillate. You want it to be balanced. You don't want any one taking over. You want them to be complementing each other, not competing with each other. So the short answer to your question is I can't tell you. <laughs> are looking at um, a deep whiskey that you're producing, what would you aim your ideal customer to be? Is it someone that appreciates whiskey, more of an enthusiast, or um, anyone you're going maybe a little bit more mainstream? I think Royal Salute, Royal Salute is a whiskey that right from the very start, from the minute you see it, you can see that it has really luxurious packaging it is really really rich in colors it has wonderful finish to the decanter and um, also right there on the label it's been matured for 21 years so i the answer to your question is i'm thinking that probably the people that buy royal salute are people who have tried whiskey before and are looking to um, develop their experiences and are wanting to try something really special that gives them real flavour and length of finish that when they take a drink of Royal Salute 21 year old it's going to stay on their palate for a while and take ages to dissipate that it's going to be really rich and a fabulous sweet experience so it, it, the, the, the short answer to your question I think it's probably people who have tried whiskey before but are looking for an even more luxurious experience the Jaguar of whiskey <laughs> I might steal that from myself. <laughs> yeah, it's something, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's something that you understand and you know whiskey and you're thinking, well, I'm going to try that. And I, I, I think it, it's, it's well known that Royal Salute has a fabulous reputation for making good whiskies consistently. And that's what's really important. Make good whiskies, but make them consistent year after year. What are the uh, the best markets for Royal Salutes? In Asia, I mean, Royal, Salute, Royal Salute is very, very popular in Asia. Um, Asia is a place where you know people love to give gifts and they love to give gifts that are really good quality. But to be honest with you, I see, I see Royal Salute wherever I go these days and it, it's amazing how many, even of my friends who I've managed to get a bottle for have a... Uh, can't wait to get their second bottle are always saying to me when can I get another bottle of Royal Salute and um, I think it's it's very popular all over the world but yeah Asia is a place where it is and um, it reigns supreme in the super premium category I think it's a whiskey being, being Royal Salute and having the 21 year old on the label and all the Royal Salute family being matured for at least 21 long, long years it's amazing 21 years the commitment to do that and lay that stock down for all that time is a big commitment and a huge expense for our business, but one that we feel is worth it because at the end result is just amazing. So if you would have to pick your favourite, I know it's like picking your favourite child from three of them, <laughs> which one would you <laughs> I've, been, I've been really fortunate under my tenure to be able to make some really new examples of Royal Salute and be able to play with the flavours and make something in the family style but something slightly different. Um, the 62 gun salute, Royal Salute 62 gun salute is really really nice but for me, for me to be responsible for Royal Salute 21 year old and it's one that I know I've been working with Royal Salute 21 year old for over 15 years now you know I, I know it inside out 
and I just love to come back to that. That is the, the mainstay for me and has the wonderful rich and it's the real signature of Royal Salute. And also, if I'm to be really honest with you, I can't afford some of the other ones. <laughs> It's better to be honest. <laughs> so where the idea for the pack? Because I understand the pack is a new idea for the brand. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And Royal Salute has been long associated with royalty and the, the 21 Gun Salute is something that is synonymous with very, very special royal occasions. Um, and we felt that it would be a good idea to tie that in with a, a really fabulous banquet that took place in 1817. You know, that this banquet that was held at the Royal Pavilion was just unbelievable. 120 dishes that were just all coloured with different natural colourings to make them really vibrant. And we felt that it was something that was really quite fitting, tied in quite well with Royal Salute, that it was something that tied in quite well and that we felt that it was it was interesting to associate that with that, that luxury, that opulence of the whole dinner and the whole banquet was a, was a good tie in with Royal Salute and we felt that the whole, the Brighton Pavilion has some wonderful architecture, it's a beautiful, uh, like the Royal Salute packaging is absolutely beautiful and we felt the synergies were just really good. For me, it's after 34 years in the whisky business, it's a, it's, it's a huge honour for me to be able to look after such a prestigious whisky, to be able to say that you, know, you, you have been responsible for Royal Salute to make sure that the quality is correct, that the continuity is correct, and laid down the right whiskies so that Royal Salute can continue way into the future when I have retired. I have no more questions, so maybe That's guys. Okay. <laughs> How many um, bottles are produced each year annually? How many bottles do you produce, or does that vary? It does vary. It depends. It depends, and it, 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 sometimes it can be limited by the stock that we have available because we do have we do have twenty one year old stock, but we have to have it in the right proportions to make the to make the blend and make the volume. So it's not it's not a specific volume year on year. But it is it is significant because it travels all over the world. Yeah, I'm in Vegas at the minute, so sorry? I can vouch for that. <laughs> what was that, sorry? Sorry? I didn't hear you there, sorry. I said I'm in Vegas at the moment. Oh my goodness. So I can, so I can vouch for that. It is seven o'clock in the morning Matthew, so yeah, sorry, what time is it in Vegas? Oh my goodness. You've got to win the prize for the person who has drunk Royal Salute the earliest in the morning. <laughs> you should be you should be given a special medal for that. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done. How does it taste at seven o'clock in the morning? Does it taste good? Fantastic. Oh brilliant. <laughs> ah, I must try it too. That's got to be my job then during the during the Christmas holidays is to have Royal Salute at seven in the morning. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you should take the take the royal salute, take it again, and you should try the try the sample again with the water. Just when it's been sitting there, and it's given a bit of time with the water added to it to come up to room temperature, and try it again. You'll really see that there's a real sweet, sweet, creamy smoothness. There's that fruitiness. But like I've been saying all along here, the finish is just amazing. It just fades away gently on the palate, the sweetness just subsiding slowly. It doesn't hit the palate then disappear. It is really luxurious. So guys, I hope you've I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have any other questions, you know, do not hesitate to contact anyone and you know feed the questions back through to me. I'm only too happy. I just love talking about Scotch whiskey and I love talking about Royal Salute. So I hope you really enjoyed that. And I'll speak to you again soon. But you can always say, remember, you can always say that you were at the very first Royal Salute virtual tasting. Well done. <laughs>